Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming out uh, to our 68 fashion show, and really it's more like the 60s. Um, and so we are going to start with our first model. We have models from the community, models from the SMSU community, and um, uh, those of all ages. We have youngsters and we have some that are not quite so young anymore, um, <laughs> which has nothing to do with our first model at all. This is just how it worked out. So our first model here is Mara Wiggins. And Mara is a librarian at SMSU in the McFarland Library. She's going to, we're going to use this outfit as our starting point. This is circa 1957. Uh, of course, we're in 1968 here, but we want to always have a point of reference as to where, we're, where we've come from. And so Mara's wearing uh, the new look as created by Christian Dior. There's a, a slide up here if you want to reference that as well. Uh, after World War II, Dior thought that it was time for the ladies to uh, have a little fun with their fashions again after all of the rationing and things from World War II. So he created the new look, which is a very full skirt. And then the jacket that she's wearing is called a swing coat. And that was to accommodate the larger skirts that were being worn by women. Very fashionable. Excellent. And you can clap. <laughs> <laughs> And this goes to the other end of the spectrum here. So we start in 57, and this is how where we get to by the late 1960s. <laughs> the trendy marriage of Polly and Esther, as seen here by Anita Gall. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the tag does say 100% polyester. 100%. If any of you know anything about polyester, that means that she could be sprayed with water and she would drip dry. Um, she could also have a pen explode on her and she could just wipe it off. So super handy. Which happens, Which happens yes. <laughs> this is a pantsuit uh, and it, it expresses the, uh, the wonderment of design with the green plaid and the green polka dots. Excellent. Yes. Uh, you want to take off your shoe? Bell bottom pants, right? Bell bottom trousers um, with a stretch band waist. Yes. Excellent. Uh, can you take off your shoes so they can see your shoe? The shoes are wonderful. We have a lot of vintage shoes in stock, and so this is one of the pairs of shoes that we have uh, in our own stock. So it's a, uh, um, a leather uh, upper. Hush puppies. Hush puppies. Hush puppies. Oh, excellent. Do you remember Hush puppies? <laughs> Very nice. Excellent. Thank you. Now, now, Anita wore several outfits this afternoon, but she's going to another lecture, so she was just going to bless us with the one outfit. Now she's got to go do something else. So she was also a hippie and wore a very trendy blue and white costume in the, in the first uh, session here. This is oh. our own Marshall Lyon County librarian, Paula Nemes here. Oh. Isn't she pretty? Uh, in a green pencil skirt and, uh, and, the, and a jacket. That's a, ja and a jacket, a double-breasted jacket here. Um, she's got the pink uh, piping or peach pink piping uh, in the middle. And then, as you can see, unlike Mara's skirt that she was wearing initially, this one is much more slender, the pencil skirt. <clears throat> With a mandarin collar. You can see that that is not a, uh, a t right, is a mandarin collar. Um, similar to what we would see on like a Nehru jacket. I don't have any Nehru jackets in, in the show. We do have one in stock. Thank you, Paula. We do have one in stock, but it is a contemporary suit that had a Nehru jacket on it. Color. Thank you. And th let's not forget the men. So the early 1960s, this is what a fashionable man would be wearing. Uh, this is Paul Reagan, one of our theater majors, and this is a suit that he actually wore when we did Boeing Boeing, which was set in the early 1960s. So maybe if you've seen that show, you saw him in this before. Uh, so this is a green suit. Uh, notice where the pants hit on his, uh, on his leg. They are just at the top of his shoe, almost near his ankle. And if you've ever seen um, anything like the Dick Van Dyke show, you know that's where all of Rob Petrie's pants hit, just above the, the shoe. You can go all the way around, that's great. Uh, this is a two-piece suit, does not have a matching vest, or it would be a three-piece suit. And, but he does have a coordinating vest that he's wearing as well. Um, also notice the kind of the subdued color, which we will not be seeing at the end of the 60s, um, <clears throat> and the length of, or the, the width of his tie. He has a narrow necktie, which again changes by the time we get to the end of the 1960s, early 1970s. Thank you, Paul. Right. You may be thinking that you can hear music playing, and you can. I'm actually playing the White Album. The White Album came out November 22nd, 1968, so we're, we're listening to the White Album. Should I turn it up a little bit? Yeah. Our next model is Aviana McFarquhar. Dressed in a pink 
orange, yellow, white, and brown striped dress. <laughs> You'll notice that this dress hits at the natural waistline. We're going to see that change from time to time, even with some of the, uh, the pictures that you can see above here in the slideshow. It's kind of a whatever you're, whatever you're feeling at the time kind of waistband. We don't have it sitting at any particular spot um, by the time we get to the mid to late 1960s. Aviana is also sporting a, uh, a typical African-American hairstyle at this time with an afro. <laughs> Next we have Emily Rose Rasmussen. Emily Rose is wearing a purple, gray purple, boucle dress. Uh, we believe that this had a matching jacket had a matching jacket. <laughs> we can't find it. Um, or maybe I'm just thinking there should be one with it. Um, she had, notice also the length of the dress, the skirt. We're going to see this change uh, by the time we get to the 1960s. It has a, uh, an actual belt that matches the dress. And then we have this little pin uh, in the center here. And sensible shoes. She's wearing sensible brown leather shoes. Emily Rose is also sporting a hairstyle typical of the day. Um, not exactly as short as Twiggy, but a much shorter cropped hairstyle uh, like we would see on Twiggy. From that hemline to this hemline. This is a mini dress. Okay, she came pre-made. <laughs> This is Caitlin Zasky Simning. She's a senior at Marshall High School. And Caitlin's got a couple of things going. Well, she's got a lot of stuff going on, but she's got a couple of things of note. Uh, one is the length of the skirt, very short. Um, and I know from Gold College, and I did this at the Senior Center a couple of years ago, and someone came up to me and said, the shorter the better. <laughs> and it is not someone who is 20 now, let's just say. <laughs> Um, she also is wearing uh, the knee-high white leather boots or faux leather boots. Um, we had a couple pair in stock, but they don't, they don't last. So they were kind of peeling away. If you remember, they would do that after a while. This is a pair that we bought for a show. I also want to draw attention to you, uh, to Caitlin, her eye makeup that she's done. Um, when we were getting ready for this, I sent a bunch of stuff from the era for the girls to kind of pick what kind of makeup they'd like to do. And she gravitated towards this. Um, I sent this because this is this is absolutely from 1968 in London. This is how the girls were doing their makeup. And so they would create, well, Caitlin, why don't you talk about it? Why don't you say what you did? Oh, um, okay. So I put some eyeshadow just on like the lid, like the shorter part of the lid before the crease. And then I put eyeliner, liquid eyeliner over the crease. Okay, right. So, so, so she's got li eyeliner where we wear eyeliner, and then she's added some above. And so when you close your eyes, <laughs> it looks like you're an eyeball without an eye, or an eye without an eyeball. <laughs> but super, super fancy. And the, uh, the reason for that is so that when you open your eyes, it looks like you've got these really thick black eyelashes, when it all it is is just kind of smoke and mirrors. You know, it's all just fake stuff. Um, there were, go ahead, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> There was another picture that we found on Pinterest also from the era where these girls would, would very elaborately make these kind of sunbursts on their eyelid with eye with, with light liner and uh, and then when they opened their eyes it looked like their eyeshadow and their um, their eyelashes were really, really long and thick, but all it was was like a sunburst painted on their eyelid, but it was all to make it look really thick and, and natural. Uh, all right, our next model here. Is there a model there? There she is. <laughs> this is Caitlin Shower. She's also a senior at Marshall High School. And she's wearing a more of a baby doll, kind of a younger girl's um, mini dress here. She's got a, a larger Peter Pan collar. Um, <clears throat> and she's got these beautiful little pink mules on that she's wearing her little shoes. They've got a little point on the end. And they are vintage shoes that we have in stock from the 1960s. Her top is smocked as well. Were you going to say something, Pat? Yeah, we've had, we've had some discussions about that, actually. Yeah, thank you, Caitlin. Uh, the idea of um, tights. And all the, all the women that were there this afternoon also said, we all wore tights, opaque tights, or some kind of nylon and hose and things like that. These girls don't fly like that, typically. They don't really wear hose anymore. Um, but they would wear, have worn tights or hose with their, even with their little mini skirts. Uh, next we have 
Maggie, um, and she's going to be starting off a series of uh, models wearing different jackets that we have in stock from the 1960s. So you want to put your hood up? So this is a wool uh, winter coat, plaid, multicolored winter coat with a hood, double-breasted, with a belt in the back. And who's Maggie's? Maggie Tabaka, this is, can you, can you, if you couldn't tell, <laughs> she belongs to me. <laughs> um, and underneath her winter coat, she's wearing a little blue mini dress uh, with a blue bow in the middle, and then above that, we've got some smocking. She's a junior man? She's a sophomore. She's a sophomore. Yep. Um, Maggie's shoes also are vintage from our stock, and they are, um, can you take your shoe off once? In the front of them, they have an embossed floral print on them as well. So they would have taken an embossing and smushed it. Yeah, you guys are like, yep, mm -hmm, I had those, right? Oh, uh, thank you, Maggie. Another one of our coats from stock, this is a double-breasted blue polyester jacket that we have in stock, uh, worn by Sally. She has a short belt in the back, buttoned in the back, and underneath this blue jacket is a, uh, another mini dress. Again, this one hits just above, or just under the bust line. Can you take off your coat? It's got lacings in the front. This one is sleeveless. We've got a couple that have long sleeves. Most, most of them that are in our stock either have that kind of puffy short sleeve or are sleeveless like this one. Um, it's got a nice collar on it, and she also has some wonderful vintage shoes that have a chunk heel and a large buckle. I'm sorry? Yeah, she's a senior in high school. Yep. Uh, next, oh, there you are, excellent. Um, Avian is wearing another one of our jackets from stock. This is a red and white horizontal striped jacket with a belt. Yes, her slip is showing, as it was always a problem for us, right? Our slips were always showing. <laughs> Underneath her red and white horizontal striped jacket, she has a, uh, a, a nautical light blue kind of sailor dress with a fully pleated skirt and then the, the tan trim with the tan buttons. Again, notice the waistline on this dress is not below the bust nor at the natural waistline. This is a drop waist on this dress. So lots of different options here. Yeah, they're not having fun at all. Mm -mm. Unfortunate. <laughs> but she looks great, right? <laughs> Uh, next, we have a very smart evening dress, not a long, uh, long dress. We did have some long formals, obviously, as you know, but some of them were just smart kind of evening wear. This is a, uh, a paisley print jacket with a blue sheath dress underneath. Go ahead. Yes, just snap it. Ah, super cute, very smart, mm-hmm. Many of the fashions from this era, I just keep coming back to that word smart. They all just look very sophisticated and smart. Mm -hmm. Nice. And so she could wear, you know, she could wear that out to dinner. She could wear that to dance. I mean, we don't do that anymore. And so we don't have a point, but you have a point of reference for that, right? Where you would get up and go out to dinner, dress up and go out to dinner and dress up and go dancing and things like that. Wonderful. Very nice. <laughs> um, here's another dress from our stock from Mara Wiggins modeling so nice I think this is my favorite dress I don't know until I see the next one I really love this dress this is a sheath dress that has that short belt or that small belt um, and the big bow <coughs> on the shoulder <laughs> very nice horizontal yeah. stripes we have a lot of things with horizontal stripes and of course today you know, the fashion world says horizontal stripes are a no-no. They make you look even ba bigger than you are, and yet it's super, very, very nice. And then, of course, the matching shoes. And uh, Anita's not here anymore, but when we did the evening dresses, um, all the girls have, notice that all the girls have uh, matching and coordinating shoes. Lots of heels in the closet. I don't see a problem. Very nice. And here comes Nancy. <laughs> Isn't she 
Doesn't she look sweet? I know, she looks so cute. <laughs> so we have a couple of dresses that are similar to this. This is what's known as the uh, op art, where you've got this kind of optical illusion going on with the garments. Um, and pop art was another, you know, Andy Warhol and the pop art and the Campbell soup um, dresses and things like that. But another, um, another kind of um, style to go along with the pop art was this op art that has this kind of um, design, uh, radical design on the garment. Uh, Nadine's wearing, this is a polyester dress, um, and um, she does not have a waistline, but she's uh, got her decorative apron on. So, right? <clears throat> Hostess apron, that is correct, yes. She's all ready now to sit down and have Thanksgiving. If she was making the meal, it would be a different apron, but this is now, the guests have arrived, and so she's put on her hostess apron. Wow. Very nice. Mm -hmm. And notice the, uh, the girl's hair. I gave them, again, those Pinterest boards, and they've kind of, depending on their age and what their hair can do, they've done different kinds of things. And Nadine has that wonderful flip and a flip, and the Mary Tyler Moore is all over the place, right? Yes. <laughs> Marlo Thomas. Oh, yes. How much hairspray? How much hairspray, right? Um, okay, next. We're going to the beach. <laughs> Here's some swimwear from the mid to late 1960s. Um, Sally wearing a one piece with little embroidered flowers. Maggie's has a patchwork design. It's not real patchwork, but it has a patchwork design on it, and it has a little skirt that goes along with it. Um, I was telling the, the group this afternoon that the green one we've had in stock, the patchwork one I actually was given by my mother-in-law, gave it to me. Um, after she was done having her eight children, she bought a swimming suit so that they could go swimming. S eight children! <laughs> We don't talk to her anymore. We don't like that. <laughs> Very nice. Super cute. All right. <laughs> and Paula is back now. Paula was brave enough to wear the negligee. So great. So this is from the mid-1960s, and, um, and it's really wonderful. It has this robe with the puffy sleeves, and then it has a nightgown. And um, the thing that I was really drawn to this, and again, most of these things are from our stock, but this dress, uh, this nightgown, I should say, negligee, um, it can be seen in lots of early 1960s sitcoms. Laura Petrie wore this negligee in the Dick Van not this one, but this one, in the Dick Van Dyke Show. And the thing I love about it is, if you look at it from the front, it looks like it's got this below the bust waistline, but on the back, it's a capelet, right? And then the waistband goes under it, but it's hidden, so it looks like it's a very kind of interesting construction to the garment. And then the nightgown is underneath it. Wonderful, beautiful. Next we have Emily Rose, super cute, very smart. Um, a white patterned sheath dress with a green trim on the bottom. Some of the little green circles have little mirrors in them or little, uh, little um, reflections in them. And she's got those adorable little white Mary Janes with the pointed toe as well. Very classy looking, and of course, those of you who wore these things in the 1960s, I mean, you're probably thinking, no, they were terrible, I couldn't move, blah, blah, but they, they look so great, and uh, they look so great on so many different body types. Really wonderful. Very nice. And tall Caitlin. They're Sally's friends, and one of them is a twin, and one of them is tall. So this is tall, Caitlin. <laughs> we just call her tall. Uh, in another mini dress. This is a two-tone pink and white mini dress uh, that she is wearing. Of course, you can see that it zips in the back. Um, it's a little bit longer than the blue one that she was wearing initially. There were uh, lots of stories when, when I did this at Gold College, you know, the women talking about how when they walked up the steps, they'd have to put their hand on their bottom. Look at all the heads shaking, right? <laughs> had their hands on the, their bottom, or they'd have to walk up sideways. And then this afternoon, someone said, or have a good friend walk behind you. <laughs> so now, so does that mean one of your friends wasn't wearing a mini skirt, or were they walking backwards? I'm not sure. Yes, thank you, Caitlin. 
Catherine Caitlin is back with a little romper. This is a cotton romper. Um, floral print, it zips in the front, has these little um, tulip sleeves, but it's shorts. So if she's standing still, it look, it's super cute. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like a skirt, but then it's comfortable and, uh, and shorts. And I know this afternoon they were talking about not just the, the rompers like this, which are making a comeback. Lots of girls, there's rompers in the stores now, uh, but the idea of culottes, you know, so you could wear shorts and then a little flap, and then I guess you're not wearing shorts to school. Um, and she's got some vintage shoes on as well, those little, can you pick up your shoe once? Can you like hold it up so we can see it? Yeah. Adorable. <laughs> Super cute. Thank you. <laughs> Next, oh, Sally's going to play tennis. Look at her outfit. <laughs> so Billie Jean King turned pro in 1968. And we have this in our stock. And so I thought I would uh, have Sally try it, wear it and fit her really well. And so she's wearing it for the show today. Very, very cute. Um, and you can see that this is, we're, we're probably around the early 1970s here. This is polyester. Uh, would have been worn, you know, to play tennis and different sporting events and things like that. Um, and notice that it's red, white, and blue. If you remember, as we got closer to 1976, everything was red, white, and blue. Our neighbors had a red, white, and blue wedding. The girls were in red and blue and the bride was in white. I know. They liked it, you know, whatever. Um, but very, very popular. Very nice. The little tennis outfit. And now we have the annoying kid sister. <laughs> Maggie on roller skates. She doesn't have a key, but she's still roller skating. <laughs> Her mini dress is a little bit longer, also made of polyester, a little bit fuller. She has a, a full puff sleeve with a cuff and then a large Peter Pan collar. If you notice that most of the dresses that we had that have Peter Pan collars, they're not like a small collar, they're kind of an exaggerated collar. And we have a couple of dresses um, in, in the show and in stock that are very similar in print to this. They're not all exactly the same, but they're just a little bit different. Um, and a lot of these dresses would have been homemade. I talked to Marquita Banks after the afternoon show, and she, was you know, she taught home ec for years, and she talked about how um, a lot of, lot of women and young girls were making their dresses at this time. And so they had a lot, like their moms and the daughters all had like similar kinds of fabrics and things on their dresses, matching dresses and things like that. Thank you, Here's another one of our op art dresses worn by Mara Wiggins. I know. I think you like this one a little too much. You know? <laughs> Super cute. Uh, those big, bold patterns. And the op art could be lots of different things. A lot of times they were created to have kind of a razor size effect like we get on the computer now. But sometimes they were just big, bold patterns. And this is one of those uh, that fall into that category with the big, large flowers on it. Again, just a sheath, no waistline. And it's hitting her um, just above the, above the knee. So not super short like we were seeing before. A little more practical. I think it's linen. Is it? I don't know. Can I touch you? <laughs> or a cotton. Oh, no, I think it's linen. I think it's linen. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very nice. Well, we'll see if she's ready. Uh, oh, she's ready. All right. Uh, <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> so here Caitlin is again with a multicolored herringbone print uh, mini dress. It's got, again, a very large Peter Pan white collar, long sleeves this time with the white cuff and then the little black tie. Uh, unlike or just like her other dress that had the white boots, this one has the black boots. Fantastic. That's fantastic. Thanks, Caitlin. They were asking about jewelry, and in a lot, lot of the research, oh, and Pat's right here, the research that I found, you know, it's a brooch or necklaces. It's not like bangly kind of lots of stuff going on. It's very simple kinds of things, you know, lots of pins, a lot of little pins, pearls, you know, things like that, but not like layers of bracelets Janice and things Jones. like that. Janice Jones. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> All right. Okay. Um, here comes Nadine back in a moo. Oh yes, I heard somebody say. Oh yes, so lovely. Green swirled pattern. Remember again where we were with that black dress that Mara had on very first, you know, with that black dark dress and the black and white. Now we've got lots and lots of color <clears throat> going on. Also sandals, Nadine's wearing sandals, sensible shoes, right? Um, and again, you know, 10 years before this, we have June Cleaver who's in the house with a full skirt and pearls. And now we have women in this in the house. Um, several of these women have said that they really should be coming out, have, out here with a martini glass and a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And worn in lots of different occasions, right? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, we have um, a couple of evening gowns now. Um, Aviana's wearing a gold evening gown with matching shoes. Um, and Aviana, can you can you go like this on the front of that? What does that look like? Is it all one unit? Can oh, you turn no, around? It's two, it's two units. Yes. Okay, so can you tell tell us what's in there? What oh, do you so got on? A skirt and then this is like a, a skirt and a long jacket. Yeah. 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 Okay. Excellent. Excellent. And then Caitlin's wearing a silver lame pleated skirt uh, or a dress with a pleated skirt and then buttons down the front. All, both acceptable, right? Short and long evening dresses. And again, with the matching shoes, coordinating shoes. Yeah. We've gotten a couple of, uh, I got a donation from Jim Tate from his mother, and she had orange, um, <laughs> she had orange uh, brocade, high heeled, pointed shoes, and a matching purse. Super cool. Yes, it's in my office, it's not in the stock. Uh, okay, oh, and here's, here's the mystery garment, which I think we figured out this afternoon. So we were kind of confused about this, and because it was together on a hanger. And we thought, well, maybe it's like vacation wear, but it's a long dress and we're not really sure. And the dress surely looks like it's a, like a formal dress. And then this afternoon, someone said, that they thought it was a matching set. And so now we're thinking that Paula's wearing the women's dress and the men's shirt. Awesome. Yes, yes. Mark Fokin just said his folks came back from Hawaii. Is this theirs? The, okay. Um, and so now we know that that's a men's shirt and then the matching women's dress. Maybe progressive couple, you never know. You never know. Drunk in all air room or something. <clears throat> a, uh, a presentation on 60s fashion wouldn't be complete without the hippies, right? And we lost two of them because one of them had to go to rehearsal and the other one went to a talk. But we have one. Okay, here comes Maggie. She's a little excited about coming out here. Um, so here comes Maggie in. Um, Red, white, blue, and yellow striped bell-bottom <laughs> pants. She's wearing a tie-dyed shirt and a self-crocheted vest. I mean, she didn't crochet it, but it would have been made and crocheted, you know. Possibly with macrame as we get into the more of the 1970s, right? Um, yes, and she has fantastic shoes. They're uh, uh, vinyl and leather uh, upper and a very wide, large heel on them as well. Super fun. Um, the other, uh, <laughs> the other <laughs> hippie had um, one of the hippies had on a fringe vest, which was actually uh, owned by Dr. Jan Loft, and she lent it to us for the fashion show. Uh, Jordan wore that this afternoon, and then thank you. And then as we get into the 1970s, Paul. Paul's wearing a leisure suit. A leisure this is how far we've come. Remember that Paul looked so nice in the early 1960s, and now he looks like a used car salesman. I love it. <laughs> so he's wearing polyester, as we know. Um, polyester red trousers, they're textured, um, and a match coordinating jacket. We have a lot of suits from this area. We have a couple of leisure suits that are matching jacket and pants, but a lot of them are like coordinating uh, jacket and pants. Um, he's wearing zipper boots, 
uh, because he didn't fit into any of the white pairs of shoes that we have in stock, because we do have some white shoes. Um, and we don't have a white belt, or he'd be wearing a white belt as well. Um, his shirt is a Madra shirt with a large butterfly collar awesome large butterfly collar and then notice his tie is highly patterned and textured and much wider than it was in the 1960s mm -hmm. i'm sorry if this is somebody in this audience's tie or anything <laughs> like they donated it so <laughs> excellent thank you paul very nice all right let's take one more look at all of our models and all of our fashions Emily Rose is wearing your Star Trek dress. <laughs> Fantastic. Came out of the 1960s. Awesome. So we have, uh, we have some time if you have any questions or if you want to look at any of the garments uh, a little closer up. Don't touch the models, uh, but you surely can. Um, we also have some other costumes. There are other costumes that they wore on the rack. We'll just wheel the rack out if you want to take a look at them. Um, I have a couple of things up here on the dress forms. Uh, this one, which everybody seems to love, um, was, I'm not, I'm, we're not really sure about it, but it didn't fit any, anybody, so. <laughs> but it looks good this way. Um, this is a mini dress, clearly a mini dress, and really hitting just just below the bum, depending on, on the woman, right? Uh, with the wide neckline here. And then this dress uh, would also be an evening dress, kind of in that um, oriental style, which was really popular in the 1960s. And then I brought these in, um, when I did the gold college thing, but I brought them in again. I didn't talk about them this afternoon, but I thought I maybe should. So this is one of those little um, mother-daughter matching outfits. Wow. Worn by my mom and me when I was little. <laughs> and my jacket, too. So, um, so if you want to take a look at those. I also brought a whole bunch of patterns from that are all from 1968. I thought with so many women sewing at that time and making their own uh, garments, I thought I would bring in some of the patterns as well. So. Uh, you're welcome to talk to the models and look at the things that they've got on or look at some of the other things on the rack or if you have any questions we'd be happy to yeah so provost the, the models that were in high school these the things that you modeled are they uh, would you feel comfortable wearing any of this today no. uh, <laughs> you look super cute in them uh, well, and, and, and why no too short to yeah. uh, too short too yeah. okay now wait a second uh-huh so those shorty short hot pants you remember hot pants yeah. right okay well these guys wear hot pants and they're like no they're not they don't want to wear these mini dresses but they wear those shorty shorts yeah. 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 The daisy, dukes. Yeah. daisy dukes right but the, but the, the young women wear the shorty shorts under under like a, a something short like yeah that. Uh, do you do you have your span yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 but they but they didn't in the 60s right you no, were just no. tights and underpants right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. The tights helped. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just think it must have been so cold in the winter because even the jackets weren't, you know. Wear your pants to school under your skirt. Oh, yeah. Well, I did that when I was in grade school. That's what we did. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Knee socks. Mm hmm. Yep. Yep. Any questions? Well, what, feel free. Yeah. What's your thoughts about the fashion that you design? Would you keep any of those? <laughs> yeah, we were talking. I was talking to one of the students who was working in the costume shop this afternoon, and she's doing some research on the 1940s. And she said, "All the hats and gloves, all the hats and gloves. You know, we don't have that anymore, and we just don't we don't adhere to that." So, yeah, mittens and, and wool stocking caps. <laughs> Great. One last question. I'm sorry, I'm monopolizing. Paul, would you wear any of this today? What do you, what's your thoughts? I would not wear this shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but my first outfit that I wore, I would wear that in a heartbeat. Yeah, that would be mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. I told Sheila and a few other people many a time, if she ever put that green suit up for sale, I would <laughs> snatch it up in a heartbeat. I would love it. And that, yeah, and that suit is is very contemporary yeah, looking, you know, very the, slim. Mm -hmm. especially, especially the cut of the pants. Yeah, I for sure. Well, and that, you know, we talk about that in costume history. Things just kind of go like this. Yeah. They get wider and, and narrower and longer and shorter. I mean, that's just what happens, you know. We all think it's something new, but really not so new. So did you guys actually tease your hair? Or 
you just yeah. 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 I actually love this show. My mom was a seamstress, and she sewed for all of my two, door, uh, my two uh, sisters, older sisters. And I was the youngest of six, and she would drag me to the fabric store. <laughs> and I spent most of my time looking at simplicity. I don't see the problem. <laughs> <laughs> looking at simplicity and McCall at mm -hmm. the, the J.C. Penney's and mm -hmm. Sears and fabric counter. Mm -hmm. And, and Butterick, that was the other one. Well, I'm going next Tuesday if you want to come with me. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Go to Joanne's, relive some memories. <laughs> yeah, Mark? You mentioned that a lot of people, and I know because making, that made their own clothes, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm curious about how economic um, sort of patterns and um, access to Shopping so that's what that's what Marquita Banks was talking about. That there were like most of the women here in this region would sew, and then they're in Sioux Falls. They got a Dayton's basement, and once they got a Dayton's basement, things started to change because they were affordable. Otherwise, things were just so expensive they couldn't afford. I mean, they could order stuff from like Montgomery Wards and you know the catalog and, and Sears catalog and things like that. But once Sioux Falls got that Dayton's basement, things just started to change around here. Otherwise, it was all. There's a lot of ordering online, mm -hmm. ordering clothes in the catalog, but, but um, people wanted to like interact. Yeah. With it's like we do today too. Right? Isn't that funny though that we that we order stuff online and we ordered stuff on phone. We used to just call, call and call your number and circle all the stuff in the catalog and so, you know, yeah. You go to Montgomery Wards and get your package and it's super exciting, yeah. Same, same thing we do now. It just comes in a box that says Amazon on the side, right? Yeah. Great, well thank you, thank you, right. thank you very much. Thank you.